Hey guys, I'm back again. And we have another serial killer on our hands. It's amazing how these guys go undetected. And how long that they're running amok in these streets. How is it possible? Why is it that no one sees anything? No one hears anything? It's, it's insane. We have someone by the name of Arthur John Shawcross. And he was known as the Genesee River Killer. He was in Rochester, New York, and he would go by the river. And that's where most of his killings were, were done. That's where he, he, he would strangle these women. Mind you, these are streetwalkers, women of the night, people that no one, these are people that no one will be looking for. These killers are so callous. And they didn't care about the life they was taking. They just enjoyed killing people, killing innocent women. So this guy that was a piece of crap, his life lack thereof. He was a young boy who was said to have been a bully in school. Hmm. Imagine that. He had three siblings. And well, he was born in June, June 1945. So he was with his family. His family was quite dysfunctional. Is that why he was a monster? Who knows? It's possible. Maybe so, maybe no, who knows? It said that there was a lot of incest going on in that family. I mean, that's his recollection. That's what, that's what he says. Is it true? Whatever. So he did drop out of school. He dropped out in the 60s. And at the age of 21, in April of 67, he did go to the army. So around this time, this horrible person divorced his first wife. But no, that's, that's not it. Not only did he divorce his wife, he gave up his rights to his baby. It wasn't a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old. It was a young one-year-old baby. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Women, think before you have kids with these type of men. Think before you do that. Who gives up their baby? And it's a little boy because most people, most men want little boys. And what, what does he do? He give it up. How disgusting can you possibly be? Seriously. So he went to the army and when he came back from the army, he wanted to tell everybody this elaborate story that he served a tour of duty in Vietnam. He would, you know, say, oh yeah, he was this big guy who I was ripping off heads and I was just, you know, killing people by my hands. This is his story. This is what he was, he was proud of. 
He was proud to say that he, he was taking lives. Instead of saying that you were serving your country, he came back with these grotesque stories. He wanted everyone to know who he was. He was this big bad guy. Okay. And he had another wife. So he kept up this insane behavior. It just went from one thing to another. Now he's, he was setting fires. And they were saying that he was, it, it gave him some sort of a, a sexual kind of, it turned him on when he was setting fires. This, this guy is insane. Okay. He also had a charge of two young two young people that he killed and he served time. He did serve time for that. He pled guilty to one charge of manslaughter. He served 14 years of a 25 year sentence. Can you believe that? 14 years for a murderer. He got out and they say that the year that he was out after being paroled is when he he was just out of control. From 1988 to 1989, he was running rapid. Okay? He had his 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 fair share of women. He would go to to the seedy part of town. Okay? And it said that he had murdered 11 women. Sex workers on the streets of the night. He started in 1988. His reign of terror started and it ended. It started in March of 1988 and it ended December 1989. He claims that there were 11, 12, but that means that means nothing. You have to add 10 more uh, divide that by five and then we have to add more because we know that's not the truth we know that this is a sick freaking guy these were women some of them were drug addicts okay some of them were homeless he he even said one of the women i think her name was dorothy she lived with him for a little while a homeless lady and he had her as the housekeeper she was cleaning up the house. He said he paid her four dollars an hour. Ooh, so he felt special. Yeah, let me let me have a housekeeper, and I'm gonna give her four dollars an hour. So that's that's a nice thing to make her feel worse than what she already was to pay her below minimum wage. Who does that? Who does that? He would go to this river, and that's where he would hang out. Go to this river. He would get these women from the, this nightlife, the street workers. He would get these prostitutes and he would strangle these women by the river. One by one by one. He was so selfish about their lives, their family. One, one, one woman had three kids. That's one that we know of. What about the ones we don't know of? Their, their family. And people, his, his, his wife, his fourth wife, okay, not his first, second, third, fourth wife, who married someone after ladies, 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 that's, that's sort of a sign, okay? If a guy had more than one wife, that's kind of a sign, okay? So in November 1990, he was tried and he was convicted. So, because of all the killings that he'd done, he was definitely convicted, and they tried to say all types of reasoning, why he did this, why he was doing his killing, his upbringing. There's a lot of people we know that had a very tough time, and they didn't kill people. We do know that. We know people that don't prey on sex workers. Okay. 
And it's unfortunate that this monster had a heart attack in jail. Can you believe that? So he gets off easy yet again. He was convicted and he dies of a heart attack. But then that night, So I don't know, guys, what do you think? Here we are again trying to figure out how do these stories keep happening and why no one notices. What's the reason for it? These sick freaking people out here that are hurting people for what? For what? Okay, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the video. Let me know if there's any other type of crime stories that you guys would like to hear from. And uh, yeah, talk to you later.